So I just arrived back in Florida at the Selvo and um, made a list of items I need to do. So what I want to do right now is uh, start the motor, the diesel, inboard diesel. Uh, I can't stress how valuable an inboard diesel working properly is to sailing, cruising, live aboard in Florida is. Everything's on a canal. You can't, you're not going to sail away from your mooring. It's not going to happen. Once in a while you can find a spot that you can do that, but chances are you need a reliable motor. I'm going to hit the glow plug. Hold that down for a few seconds. It's been about a month since I've started this. That's good enough. There it goes. First thing I look for is, is oil pressure. So we got plenty of oil pressure. Let's go outside the boat and look to see if it's pumping water. See. thing that I do um, about once a month when I get to the boat is I run an ozone generator. I'll show you what that looks like. Got this uh, little thing off of Amazon. You can tell but the thing's uh, emitting ozone. And what that does is gets neutralizes or gets rid of boat smell. When you leave a boat locked up for extended periods of time in southern climates, uh, there's a lot of humidity and boats get smelling musty. I'm going to check on the, uh, the temperature. Water temperature gauge is reading about 180. You can see this is a Pathfinder Marine. This is a 50 horsepower Volkswagen diesel used in the Volkswagen Rabbit uh, back in the 80s. The max RPM for this motor is up around 4,000 RPM. Um, I cruise at only 2,200 2, RPMs. I could easily cruise at 3,000 RPM. In calm conditions, cruising at 21 to 2,200 RPMs, the boat will go five knots. I'm going to be taking the boat out possibly by myself. Uh, my dad may be joining me. Not sure if he can make the trip or not. I've got this bridge right there. I've got 25 feet between the stern of my boat and the piling that supports the bridge. And so I have to catch this on a slack tide and slack tide only. And the idea is to go out that way and head on out. My dad and I made it out of the slip without any troubles. I was a little bit nervous pulling out of the slip and forgot to hit the record button. On my next trip out I'll be sure to record the whole process of leaving and returning to the dock. The reason that we have to wait till slack tide to leave the dock or to come back in is because the current runs at about three and a half knots. I usually have about an hour window around the slack tide.
We were rounding the northern point of Fort Myers Beach and came across this shrimp boat that looks like it had run aground. Once we were clear of the shallow water, we headed the boat into the non-existent wind and raised the main sail. I had a little bit of trouble raising the main. The second reef was still locked in and was trying to pull against it. Having a two-speed self-tailing winch would make raising this mainsail so much easier. It does provide a pretty good back and arm workout. The winds were very light, we were barely able to keep enough speed to stay on course. This video was taken during the time that Lake Okeechobee was draining out to the Gulf of Mexico in full force. We slowly felt the wind pick up and were now able to sail at over two knots. And then the wind died down and we were just drifting along in the current. About 30 minutes later, the wind came back and we were able to spend the rest of the afternoon sailing.
Right when the conditions were perfect for sailing, we had to head back to the slip in order to catch the slack pipe. Yeah, As we were coming into the canal, we saw the sailing ship Lynx heading out for a evening cruise. People who are familiar with the Fort Myers Beach area probably know this yacht. It's called Terabyte and is docked at Diversified Yachts. It is a 115 foot Sunseeker yacht. That's it for this video. We made it back to the slip with no problems. In the next video, I'll be installing my new electric toilet. Please subscribe and leave a comment below. Also, hit the like button.